Hello Alexander House, lovely to see you again um, and just so wonderful to see you after we all had that great afternoon in the sun last Saturday for your garden party. What a great day. Did we have so much fun with all that wonderful singing uh, and um, just enjoying uh, being around so many of your friends and family. So my name is Nicola. Uh, this is one of our usual uh, monthly uh, services that we have and which we talked about when we met last week, didn't we? But this week is particularly special because we thought we would do a little harvest festival just to remind ourselves of how fantastic God has been in giving us and providing for all of our needs. So that's what today's service is about. We're having a short reading from Psalm 30, 65 by Josh, who's one of our curates. He's just going to remind us that this God who made the mountains, who filled the waters in the streams, is the God who looks after us, the God who cares. And with that in mind, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of the Harvest Festival I thought we'd just enjoy for the moment. Just remembering some of the things that we enjoy. Various things I've chosen today, things I've been given, things from my garden. So I was given some lovely carrots with their tops on. I thought you'd appreciate those. I picked some apples from our garden with slightly few bugs on, I'm sure, but nevertheless, we will enjoy them. The last of my dahlias, looking so colourful and wonderful. Again, just a reminder of how, God, how fantastic God is. And then a few little extra things I thought I'd just say thank you to God for. Some ice cream, which I'm going to enjoy for supper. Some of my favourite Jaffa cakes, I'm sure you enjoy those too. And then some of the more normal things that we have of life. Some of the tea, some tin tomatoes. Again, just a reminder for this year where we've been so lucky uh, in being supported by all key workers in the shops that we also enjoy, that uh, thank you for what they have done for us as well. And then just a reminder that sitting at the heart of all of this is your word, because your promise is so good that you, have, you will be with us and you will look after us, uh, whatever we are going through. So let us remind ourselves of God's promises, uh, shown to us through these little examples of Harvest Festival, so let us go on to the first hymn, uh, which I'm sure you will enjoy uh, and which uh, we will sing together. You've got the sheets in your song, song book. And that will then go on to uh, Rebecca um, with the, uh, the Rebecca doing the reading, Suzanne doing the prayers. And as I say, Josh is going to be just doing a short talk for us. And then I'll bring us back together again right at the end. So let us sing together. Oh, 
Alexander House. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for the recent open day at Alexander House. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful weather and that the sun shone. We thank you that so many family members were able to come along, and the mayor too. We thank you for the joyful sound of hymns being sung in the garden, and for the great fun which the entertainer brought to the occasion. We thank you, Lord, for a really special occasion. We thank you, Lord, for the staff at Alexander House, for their kindness and their diligence, and for the faithfulness of Debs running the church service every Friday. And we pray that in their work that you will grant them strength and grace. And pray also, Lord, that some new residents might come along and join the community at Alexander House. Amen. And we will pray next at this time of difficulties with fuel and other issues in our national life for MPs and other people in positions of responsibility. And we'll pray together the prayer which is prayed in the House of Commons before every sitting of Parliament. Lord, the God of righteousness and truth, grant to our Queen and her government, to members of Parliament and all in positions of responsibility, the guidance of your spirit. May they never lead the nation wrongly through love of power desire to please or unworthy ideals, but laying aside all private interests and prejudices, keep in mind their responsibility to seek to improve the condition of all mankind. So may your kingdom come and your name be hallowed. Amen. And lastly, as we look out through the window at the lovely garden at Alexander House, I'm sure you will have noticed that the seasons have begun to turn and that the trees are turning red and the wind is blowing and that autumn is well and truly here. So at this time of, time of harvest, shall we pray a harvest prayer together in closing? Thank you, Lord, for the gift of sunshine and rain in due season, of seed, soil and harvest, provision for our needs and others. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of living water that does not run dry and the nourishment of your word, which feeds our souls and others. For love which endures, blessings which satisfy, and the opportunity to share all that you have given, we bring to you our thanks. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
sits at God's right hand till all his foes submit and bow to his command and fall beneath his feet. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. in glorious hope, Jesus the judge shall come, and take his servants up to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel's voice, the trump of God shall sound, Today's reading is Psalm 65. It's in two little parts. We read first of all verses 1 to 3 and then we go on to verses 9 to 13. It's a Psalm of David and a song. Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Verse 9. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow the hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Well, uh, good morning to everybody at Alexander House. Um, you're joining me this morning from my kitchen where um, I am surrounded by some of the results of my trip to Aldi. Uh, this morning and um, as expected I got some great bargains these uh, beans uh, four pack very very cheap it was excellent bargains and the reason that I'm surrounded this morning by such a rich variety of food is that we are at about the time of year that Christians celebrate harvest at the moment traditionally it's the time when crops come in from the fields and gives us an opportunity to celebrate and to enjoy food and um, I guess living in Wimbledon we're not that used to farmers bringing in crops, we're not surrounded by very many farms, um, but it's good for us to mark harvest, not least actually because the Bible does. Um, probably those verses that we've just had read uh, from Psalm 65, uh, they were sung by the people of God in the Old Testament when the harvest was gathered in. And it got me thinking about all of this food that I'm surrounded by this morning and all of the food and drink that we enjoy. Where does it all come from, all of this stuff? Where does it come from? After all, we, we, we live, don't we, in a world that's so abundantly provided for. Um, we, do you know there's over a thousand different types of rice in the world? Amazing. The uh, Tesco in New Malden, where I didn't happen to go this morning, has a whole aisle just devoted to bananas. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, there is such a thing as spicy food, sweet food, savoury food. Uh, there's different flavours, there's food that appears at different times of year, uh, there's food that you can just pick off a tree, like these apples down here that you can't quite see, um, there's food that you have to cook, uh, there's fruit, there's vegetables, there's tomatoes where nobody's quite sure whether they are a fruit or a vegetable, 
there's nuts. We can even eat crushed up leaves. Um, our psalm this morning speaks about carts overflowing with abundance. Um, so you can just imagine the farmers bringing their crops in from the field on the back of carts. And there's so much food in them that they're just overflowing off the back, spilling off. Uh, I've been watching a TV programme recently called Clarkson's Farm. Um, you might have come across it. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, who used to present Top Gear, has a go at being a farmer. And um, as you'll expect, if you've ever seen anything else Jeremy Clarkson's made, it's all a bit silly and a bit ridiculous, and, and it's Jeremy Clarkson being hopeless. But um, uh, it does become clear that it's very, very hard work, and yet amazingly abundant. Um, uh, what, in one episode that we watched yesterday, actually, um, he has a go at planting some potatoes, just has a go and does it in one corner of one field. Uh, it doesn't take him very long. And yet he ends up with literally tons of potatoes. I've got, I think, two potatoes down here. He had tons of them, hundreds and hundreds and thousands. We live in an amazingly abundant world. But we've been reminded recently that our food, it doesn't just come to us automatically. Um, there's been lots of uh, talk recently about supply chains, hasn't there, um, in the run up to Christmas. It's all very well planting stuff, but you need the right weather uh, to make it grow. It's all very well having stuff grow, but you need people to harvest it. And it's all very well harvesting food, but then you need lorry drivers uh, to get it to the shops. But our psalm today, Psalm 65, it, it claims that if you trace all of those supply chains back to their source, you find God. God is where it all comes from. God is where all of this comes from. After all, all of our food depends on energy from the sun. And who made the sun? But God also sends the rain. Uh, God also provides the technology to enable us to, to harvest food. Uh, when a farmer ploughs a field... He's working alongside God. When a delivery driver drives a lorry, he's working alongside God. When a supermarket worker stacks a shelf uh, full of cucumbers, uh, he's working alongside God. That's what our psalm says. It says to God, you care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers. You crown the year with your bounty. God is where all of our food comes from. And he gives it because of his love. Because of his love. Because he's generous like that. Which means that everything that we enjoy is a token of love from God. I was reading a book recently which pointed out that the thing that we all most need in the world, water, the thing that we most need, it literally falls out of the sky. How loving a God must have designed a world that runs like that. My um, dad is involved with running a food bank which runs out of a church um, near to where he lives. And on every item that they give away from the food bank, um, there's a little sticker that says, Love from Jesus. And there may as well be a little sticker on everything that we have saying love from Jesus. Because it all comes from him ultimately. He is the one who gives it to us. It's all a gift from him. But then that got me thinking, well, what is Jesus? What is God's greatest gift? If all of these things are his gifts, what is his greatest gift? Well, I don't know what your favourite food is. Um, mine actually is hot cross buns. I love hot cross buns. Um, I can't wait till Easter every year because then they're just everywhere. Maybe hot cross buns are God's, God's greatest gift. But actually, this psalm that we're looking at, which is all about the harvest and was, was I, probably sung when the harvest was gathered in, it starts with a different gift from God altogether. Not so much about food, but verse 3 says, When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. So even greater than the gifts of food and drink and hot cross buns is the gift of forgiveness of our sins. Our sins are the, way, the, ways, in which that we, the ways in which we turn away from God and, and reject him. And they mean that we deserve for God to turn away from us and reject us. And yet because of Jesus, God is able to offer us the amazing gift 
of having our sins forgiven. Now that is the greatest gift, partly because it's our greatest need. Um, if I don't have food, I will die uh, in the end. But if I don't have forgiveness, then I will experience death for eternity. It's the greatest gift because it lasts forever. Once my sins are forgiven, they stay forgiven forever. This food will go off in the end. This banana, by the end of this week, will be brown and just about edible. Um, food will go off in the end. But forgiveness from God will never go off. It will never, ever go off. And it's the greatest gift. Forgiveness is the greatest gift because it's free. Um, I had to pay some money for this food. Here we go. I've still got the receipt here. I didn't have to pay very much money. It was very good value. <laughs> but I had to pay some money for this food. But I don't have to pay anything for my forgiveness because Jesus has already paid for my forgiveness when he died on the cross. And so that means all I have to do is accept it. So that brings us to the final question. How should we respond to the things that God gives us? To his gifts of food and of drink and of forgiveness? Well, uh, we should enjoy his gifts. We should enjoy the food that, and, and the drink that he gives us. That's, that's why he gives them to us, for our enjoyment, the Bible tells us. We should share with people who don't have as much as we have. That's a really important Christian principle to remember at harvest time, that we should share. We should thank God for the gifts that he gives us. Remember that they all come, all come, right down to this potato. All of his gifts come with love from Jesus. And in fact, the psalm starts in just that way. The first verse says, Praise awaits you, our God. The psalm speaks about songs of joy to God. We should praise God for all the good gifts that we enjoy from him. We sang in our church recently that great harvest hymn you might know. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. Or the other one, which we didn't sing, there's another great harvest hymn. All good gifts around us as sent from heaven above, then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. So we, we, we must respond to God's gifts of food and drink that way, but most of all we must respond to his gift of forgiveness in that way. We must praise him that he's made it possible through Jesus for us to receive his gift of forgiveness, and we must accept that gift from him. We must accept the gift of forgiveness of sins, and enjoy it uh, for the rest of our lives and for the rest of forever. Because unlike all of this food, forgiveness of our sins is a gift that will never perish, spoil or fade. i
with you some lovely flowers that um, my son gave me recently just as a thank you as a reminder of the thank you that we are giving to God as a result of this service today a reminder of all that God has given to us a reminder of what God does for us and his promises to us as Josh talked about today so I'm going to use the words of a much loved prayer uh, sorry a lo much loved hymn just as a thank you prayer for that. And I'm sure you will, remind, you will know the words. It is the words from, we plough the fields and scatter. So it's that last verse. So let us pray together. So we thank you then, creator, for all things bright and good, the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food, Accept these gifts we offer for all your love in parts and that you would most welcome our humble, thankful hearts. We look forward to seeing you again in the next couple of weeks. And with that, let us all say Amen. <laughs>